Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video I'll be showing you how to change the real-time clock battery in your tandem transmitter. So these transmitters haven't been out that long, so people may be thinking, isn't it a bit early to need to be changing this battery? Well, yes, but there was a bug in an older version of EFOS which meant that it used more power from the battery than it actually needed to. That's been fixed for a little while now, but people are getting messages saying that the real-time clock battery is low. So in this video, we're going to be changing the battery in my X20S because I've had that message. And I'm also going to be showing how to change the battery in the X18. I'm not actually going to put a new battery in because it doesn't need it, but we'll go through taking the case apart and where the battery is so you can do it in the future. So let's head over to the bench and start. Okay, so first up, let's do the X20. So all you need is a Phillips head number one screwdriver. This is not a posi, this is a Phillips. They are slightly different. Right, I would recommend sticking your gimbal protectors on. You can actually put like masking tape across which hold them on, but I'm gonna be lazy and just <laughs> hold them down. Okay, so radio turned over. The first thing I wanna do is take the battery out and just disconnect it there. There we go, battery is disconnected. Now we just have four screws that we need to take out. So just undo the four screws. This actually stands up quite nicely just on the gimbal protectors on the top edge of the screen. There we go. All the screws are the same size, so don't worry about mixing them up or anything like that. Right, so now all we need to do is slide the case off. Now, this might be a bit tricky for me uh, on camera, but you just pull it sort of by the grips. The sliders can cause a little bit of problem. You can sort of push them downwards towards the front of the radio, and that should get them out of the back. But if they stay in the back, don't worry, we can get them out afterwards but uh, don't worry about the grips or anything like that. They stay in the uh, the back of the case. So this, <laughs> this slide is causing me issues. So if the slider comes out with the case, just push it down towards the radio and that's it. Right, so now we just need to be careful with the antenna. Slider will just go back into the little grooves there. So that's the slider in place. Now this is an IPEX one connector, so you could pop this off, uh, which might actually be easier for getting to the battery. So we'll just pop that one off. It's got a bit of sticky stuff around it, but there we go, that's removed. The sticky stuff actually makes it a bit of a pain and you're more likely to damage it <laughs> with that sticky stuff on it. Okay, so you can just about see the battery. It's right underneath there. Apparently you can just about get it out without removing the, the um, top board. I'm gonna turn the radio around to see if I can, but it might just be easier to remove these boards. So let's do that. I think these screws are gonna be quite long because there's a spacer in between these two boards. Yeah. Right, so. That is just on a little cable, but looking at it, we don't actually need to separate those. We just need to undo these top two screws. Again, we've got a few antennas up here, so we're going to have to be uh, careful with those. So pop the screws in order so we know where they came from. Just have to remember the radio is upside down. All right, let's have a look. Ah, so this board is a pin connection so that will just wobble off uh, so again be careful with the antennas but all we want to do is just shift it backwards a little bit so we can get to the battery so top of the screen is facing me and all you need to do is pull this little pin piece in and the battery should come out There we go, so it's just lifted up and then we take it out. So the battery is a CR1220. 
So what I'm going to do is pop the new one in. It just slides in that, that side and then just pushes down and that's it clipped in, job done. Now I do need to find where, <laughs> it was the little standoff piece, the, the bridge piece. So be careful with those. Ah, I see it. Right, so while the back's off the radio, um, we can have a quick look. So obviously we've changed the battery. It's it's a pretty simple job. Just watch those plastic bits. Probably be sensible to take them out before you take this board off. But you can move this board enough with the antennas clipped in. With the X20S, you have uh, four screws there and there. Sorry if I covered them over. That's how you adjust the rotation on the gimbals. You undo those screws, rotate the gimbals and tighten them up. But other than that, there's really not a lot you need to do inside the radio. So let's put it back together. I'm just going to turn it around again, just because it's easier for me to work this way. So we will <laughs> locate the push-in connector and that will, that will just pop in. that's in so now we can get these top screws in all right so they're nipped up i want to make sure that this doesn't move because obviously we've got a connector down there but also our antennas so next up we can stand these in it's actually got a little recess to to locate them inside there so this is sort of like a lego so you've got a, a smaller piece that sticks out which you put in the hole in the circuit board just to keep it in place all right there we go balanced on so we have our two extensions balanced on and now we can locate that on so what I'm going to do is put these long ones in first so the extensions can't fall out so let's do those up this is probably actually these screws are probably a Phillips head zero this is screwdriver is a little bit too big for them I think same with those to be honest those those are Phillips head one these four here Phillips head zero Okay, so that is our circuit boards back in. We have a new real-time clock battery. Uh, what's next is to put the back on. So make sure your sliders are pushed into the front part of the case. And I'm going to turn it back around. Now we need to clip in our IPEX connector. So I'm just going to clear some of this gunk around just so that we can seat that back in. So there we go. We can see the ipex connector right there but there you go you have the ipex connector that's the side that clips on the side of the sort of donut so i don't know if you're actually going to be able to see anything but you just push it on and that's it just make sure that it's seated and won't come off as this is your antenna you want to make sure that that's nicely seated Right, so once your antenna's clicked in, you should just need to slide the case back on and back together. There we go. It shouldn't be a, you know, a struggle. It should just slide in smoothly. And we can just check around to make sure that the join is all good. This side, actually, no, that's fine. So there we go. Just slide straight back on nice and easily. I find it easier with the sliders straight up and down. I don't know if that really makes a difference, but just make sure that they're both seated in there. This is obviously cleared. And now all that's left to do is put the screws back in. So again, these are Phillips head ones. Just pop them back in and tighten them up. The case should just slide back together nice and easily like that. If it, you do find that there's something snagging, just check the cables, that sort of thing and that the sliders are correctly seated. And then you shouldn't really have any problems. All right, so 
final nip up of the screws. Then it's putting the battery back in. So the grooves on the battery plug go to the top. Battery in, battery door on, and that's it, we're done. So let's power on and check out our real time Welcome clock. All right, so battery, there we go. Real time clock voltage, 3.3 volts. Okay, so that radio is done. Let's get on to the X18. Okay, so as I mentioned, I don't actually need to change the battery in this one. Okay, so let's pop into battery and you can see we're at three volts. So that's fine. I'm not gonna actually change the battery, but seeing as we're doing a video, let's take a look. Again, gimbal protectors on just because it makes life so much easier. And again, this one doesn't quite balance <laughs> like the X20 does. But first thing is the same. Let's take out the battery. This time it is in the top, but it's the same configuration. So the prongs are on the top. And again, we just have four screws. So there we go. And again, they are Phillips head number one. All right, so the screws are loose. Let's see if that will come out. There we go. Slightly just bought all the screws on the X18. Right, so again, we just need to slide the case off. This is a little bit trickier and it is all the way up around the screen. So be careful because of the antenna. So tilt the back up and it should start just unclipping from the screen. Let me turn it around so I can get a better look. That's it, and just slide it a little bit forward once you've got the back loose. So now we are loose. We can lift it up, uh, but you do again need to watch out for that antenna cable. If I hold it here, you may, may be able to see it. So again, it's just the antenna cable for the 2.4 that goes into the handle. So we can just pop that off. No gunk on this one, which is better but you notice with this there's no issue with sliders or anything like that they're all built in to the back same with these switches and they have this really smart uh, board just so everything you know is on there you don't need to worry the only connection you need to worry about is the antenna but uh, yeah, see where the battery is? There's no need to take any other boards off. So all you need to do is pop this little metal prong over until the battery pops up. There we go. And then lift it out, slide your new one in and just push it down. And that is the real-time clock battery change done with the X18. Really nice and simple. So while we're in here, is there anything else we need to look at? So as far as uh, things that you can adjust, you just have basically your spring tension here, 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 and where's the other one? Here. So they're the spring tensions for your gimbals. These uh, plates here will do the ratchet and the... Um, stiffness of your throttle so if you wanted to change from mode 2 to mode 1 you would undo these this side and do up this side and that will give you your uh, tension and the ratchet if you want the ratchet so that's really all you need to mess with we've done our job we've got our battery changed so let's get the case back together oh just in case you're wondering about antenna orientation this is the R9 so you have one vertical up the side of the case so it's running up here. So if you hold that vertical, you have actually got a vertical antenna with the R9. The other one is actually across the top here. They're the two internal antennas. And you can see that like uh, 
a little circuit board type. That black piece there is the antenna. And the antenna for the 2.4 is in the handle, which is what our cable here is, is for. So let's put the case back together. Again, we need to clip that back into the IPEX 1 connector. So sorry if you can't see this, but I need to be able to see it. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's the same as in the X20. So that was nice and zoomed in. Clip it in, make sure that it's solid and it's not coming out. Because the last thing you want is for that to come out. And then just slide the case on. So you do need to get over these bits and then you can slide it backwards and then just start clipping it in. It's mainly just clipping around the screen. The actual bottom part of the case is pretty easy to get together. All right, so let's screw it up. I'll start with the bottom on this one just because the um, screen is actually clipping the top together so it holds it in place. So getting the bottom screws in just makes sure that everything's nice and tight. And then we can just finish off with these mid screws. Okay, and the last thing is to plug the battery in, which you can just about see the battery connector here. And you see the two slots on the top. So we will take our lead, two slots on the top, and just slide it up into the connector. Battery in the hole, door on, job done. So of course it won't be any surprise that this real-time clock battery is at three volts. <laughs> so we go to battery, there we go. So there you go guys, I hope you found this video useful and now you know how to change your real-time clock batteries in the tandem transmitters. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you did find it useful. Also, the subscribe button and the bell icon will not only alert you to more videos that I make, which you may find interesting, but also will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too. Thank you very much for watching, guys. See you on the next one. Flow models like stolen.